I've tried filming this video twice, but both times I have so many tips and I just need to collect my thoughts better. So now I have them all written into a note and I am ready to help you. Long story short, I lived in Arizona. Me and my boyfriend bought a house together. Go ahead and see my house tour video here. His job moved us to Chicago, so we up and moved. We now run our house on Airbnb, and it has been such a blast. We absolutely love it. We've been on Airbnb for over a year, and in that year, I have learned so much. I do have just a quick little walkthrough video of our house on Airbnb, which is right here that you can go look at. It'll just give you a better overview of what our space looks like. In this year, I have been able to become an Airbnb super host, and I am also an Airbnb plus. So these are all tips that will help you elevate your Airbnb and get it to that level. So you're able to make more money because at the end of the day that's all what we're trying to do with our airbnbs right so the way i'm going to be going through my tips is i'm kind of going to go room by room to describe to you what i've done in each of those spaces that has really elevated it and the things that i've learned over this past year that have made a huge difference first thing i want to tell you is get yourself an electronic lock some sort of keypad lock that people are able to punch in a code and it unlocks the door and they're able to let themselves in this saves you from having to show up and meet your guests which at this point in airbnb nobody wants an airbnb almost penalizes you for having to meet your guests in person and it saves you any chaos of having actual keys. You don't want your guests to have keys. Guests will lose keys. This also puts you at a peace of mind because most of these locks do lock automatically. So that way you know if your guest has forgotten to lock the door, your door has probably locked itself anyways. These locks can vary from $50 to $350 depending on what you want. Some of them you're able to change the codes and have the codes only work for certain parts of the day and other ones you can change the code manually but you have to be there in person. It totally depends on what you want and what your style is. At the end of the day, getting one of these locks is very important. The second thing, and I learned this one over the last year, is get yourself some sort of front door camera. Whether it's a ring doorbell or just a camera mounted up on the wall, something so that we, you're able to check in on your house, see what's going on, make sure that there is the correct amount of guests there, make sure that guests have told you if they're bringing pets or not. You can double check that your cleaners came or that your landscapers came or whatever. It's just a really good way to have a better grasp on what is going on at your house if you're not able to be there physically. This has put me at such a peace of mind considering I live out of state and just gives me a really good sense of control on the house. Once you enter into the house, the first two things that I really wanna point out is get yourself some sort of Wi-Fi sign. We have a huge frame, it's like this big, that is just one of the printables that tells you the Wi-Fi name and the password and it's a really pretty way to put it up on the wall but it makes it really big so it's really obvious for people to see. That is one of the most common questions is where is the Wi-Fi? And even if you feel like you've told it to them 12 times over, guests will write it somewhere and leave little papers of the Wi-Fi. So if you just put a big sign out there for them to see, then they no longer need to do that. Another thing that I do that I really think helps with my guests is I do a welcome basket. And this welcome basket is so simple and it's really not as overwhelming as it sounds. It's just a simple basket that sits on our dining room table. So it's right there when they walk through the door. And in it, I have a welcome binder. This will be the most time consuming part, but there are plenty plenty of templates online on how to make your Airbnb welcome binder. This has every piece of information that they could possibly want in it. Directions for every single appliance in the house, where to find everything, who to call in emergencies, all the info's in there. It's the best. I also have included all of my personal favorite restaurants in the area, different things for people to do, whatever they want, it's in that binder. I've also left space at the end of it, so when guests come and they find something they really love, they can leave information in there, so people have left different yoga brochures and golf brochures and different things like that for future guests, which I think is a really nice thing to do. Besides that, I include a handwritten note. This, I just got a pamphlet of really cute little cactus looking paper and I wrote out like 60 notes all in one go. This way, when my cleaning lady comes in and turns over the house, she can just rip off one of the notes, put the new one in the basket and it's good to go for the next guest. I also include a couple of water bottles because the house is in Phoenix, Arizona and it is hot and people are thirsty and then a bag of popcorn and just some quick snacks that they can take on the ground with them. Honestly, I think the basket altogether cost me probably around $2 to fill each time, but it makes such an impact and I think guests really appreciate it and just feel a little bit more welcomed and like they've been thought about when they come into the house. Some other things in our living room that I think are really important for renters is make sure you have a smart TV. This can either be Apple TV or a Fire Stick or a Roku, but just something that people can log into their own streaming networks on and watch their own shows. So that way people can access their Netflix, their Hulu. I don't think it's necessary to provide them with a Netflix account on your behalf. Most people have them. Most people want to log into their own so they can be on their own shows anyways, but just have it so 
that way they have that accessibility. Another really great item to have is something like a Nest thermostat. We had a Nest thermostat before our house was even on Airbnb and it is the best. But now being a landlord for our house, I love it that much more because I can set the temperature so the house is cool when people enter during summer so that way they're welcomed into a nice place. I can also set it so that way the house can only be cooled down to 67 degrees and only heated to 80 degrees so that way people can't go crazy with my electricity bill. It's just another way to have a little bit more control without you being there. Some things I want to point out that made it so that way we were able to be an Airbnb Plus is they call it unique design and special touches, which basically means we went the extra steps to make our house really visually appealing for guests. Because we lived in this house beforehand, it was really easy for me because I wanted my house designed well, and then I was able to just carry that over into our Airbnb. But these can be really simple things. For instance, our house, we really went for like a modern but desert theme. So all of our colors are deserty, sunsetty, so yellows, corals, reds, and we incorporated that from the color of our front door into our art we have on the walls as well as all the throw pillows. So it's this deserty theme that's carried throughout the house and just makes the place feel really intentional. One thing that I learned over this last year, which was a huge game changer for us, was if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know I love plants. And I had a ton of plants and I left quite a few plants because to me, I thought renters will want plants. Wrong, so wrong. Renters don't want the maintenance. No one wants to be watering these plants or caring for them. So every single plant died, except for a snake plant and you could probably get away with having that in a rental because those things are impossible to kill. But besides that, get rid of all of the plants. They don't want them. I decided this time that I was gonna do fake plants and that has been so great. You can get some really pretty fake plants online which are perfect for a rental and still bring that greenery and the liveliness into a space without any of the maintenance. One tip if you are gonna do fake plants is I always pot them into normal plant pots and then fill them with soil so that way it does look a little bit more real. Another thing you can do and you can do this in all sorts of spaces, whether your house is a rental or not, but it's one of the cheapest ways to make a big impact is we added a dimmer onto our dining room light and it makes such a difference. I think the dimmer switch cost all of $5 from Home Depot, but to be able to lower that light and create an ambiance is such a nice thing to do and it makes it feel that much more luxurious. All right, moving into the bedrooms, it goes right along with what I was saying. We really try to carry in that deserty theme, but we keep everything quite minimal. I've come to realize when people are staying in a rental property, they don't want it to be cluttered with a bunch of your stuff. They want it to be quite simple and more like staying in a nice hotel or something. All of our decor in our bedrooms is really light, neutrals, lots of woods and white. And then we do have our drapes, which are a little bit more tied into that desert theme that you see in the living room. The only things that I think that you should be keeping in a bedroom is obviously your standard furniture, bedside tables, lamps, that kind of stuff. But in the closet, I think every bedroom should have a spare blanket and a spare pillow. This is really important for guests to get a little bit extra chilly at night. Providing hangers is really important as well as a laundry basket for guests to put their clothes in. We do have a washer and dryer that guests are allowed to use. So for us, it's really important to have that laundry basket so that way they're able to do their laundry if they want to. One thing we've got recently, which I think has been a really nice addition into our bedrooms is we got those folding luggage racks for people to have so that way they can open up their suitcase if they're only staying for a couple days and just leave their suitcase out and it's really accessible. We do of course have a big chest of drawers that they could unpack into, but if they don't want to, the luggage rack is a perfect solution for them as well. So moving on to the kitchen, this is quite a big one on Airbnb. They have a lot of requirements for if you're gonna be an Airbnb plus and whatnot on what needs to be in your kitchen. Right off the bat, we have a coffee maker. We provide coffee, creamer, sugar, and sweetener. That is a staple for if you wanna be an Airbnb plus. These are things I make sure are constantly stocked, really easily accessible for the guests. I do leave all of it in the cabinet so it just looks a little bit cleaner, but it's all there and ready for them. I also keep a few standard small appliances like a food processor and a toaster so guests have access to that if they want to. We keep all of your standard silverware as well as steak knives and a few different knives for cooking. We keep all of your standard cooking utensils such as whisks, spatulas, measuring cups. We have mixing bowls, baking tins, baking sheets, pans, and pots. So just all of the standard things you would need if you are staying in a house. We have people who check into our house for a month to two months and so it's just a nice way we have all of the staples in there that they need but I don't leave anything that's a little bit more obscure because like I said I think less is more and making sure that there's not that clutter is really important. We do also keep a full set of plates, bowls, we keep a set of six of kind of every kind of cup you could imagine. We have champagne glasses, wine glasses, mugs, water glasses, just lots of options so that way whatever people are doing if they're celebrating drinking a glass of wine, having a cup of coffee, they have options available for them. Airbnb is also really particular that you need to keep all of your 
standard spices and whatnot. So we just have a full spice rack that people are able to use. And I think that's a really nice thing for guests when they come in, but we also in the pantry keep your standard flour, salt, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, oils, like things like that that people have access to if they wanna cook themselves a meal. We also have a dishwasher and we keep dishwasher pods for them as well as dish soap and a dish brush. And then I just have a little frame note that sits on the counter above the dishwasher that explains where the dish pods are and for them to feel free to use it whenever they want. Also, every time we have guests check out, I make sure that our cleaning ladies go through the fridge and take everything out. I do not leave a single thing in there. I think it's just nicer for them to have a completely empty and clean fridge to walk into than walking in and having there be old condiments or whatnot. Moving on into the bathroom. We leave two bath towels in the bathroom as well as two bath towels in both bedrooms. So there is a total of six bath towels out for everyone. We also leave six face towels out for everyone as well. In the bathroom, there is one hand towel hanging and then I put a second one in a drawer in case they should need it. We always leave an extra roll of toilet paper for guests as well as a hair dryer underneath the sink. My biggest tip for in a bathroom is we got a wall mounted soap dispenser and this has a section for body wash, shampoo and conditioner and this is awesome. Leaving out the different toiletries you need in a shower I think is really important but it does happen a lot that if you leave out bottles of them people will take them when they check out. So instead of doing that we just have a wall mounted one and then in our storage we have big tubs of shampoo and whatnot that we're able to fill each time just to make sure that our guests have it and it's available for them. Moving on to the laundry room this is where I keep things that are still very important but you don't necessarily want out and about. Airbnb requires for you to have a first aid kit if you're going to be an Airbnb plus. So I do have that. That lives back there. I also have a full washer and dryer for people to use. I leave out a couple laundry pods for them and then another one of those little framed pieces that explains how they can use it and that they're free to use it whenever they'd like. I also have an ironing board and an iron as well as a clothes hanging rack if they want to air dry anything. Our laundry room is massive so also doubles as our storage room. So in here we also have a golf club's bag holder. I don't know if that's what it's called. A lot of people come to Arizona to golf so that's been really nice and people have liked that as well as we keep some fans in here. We do have ceiling fans throughout the house but these are here in case anybody wants an extra fan as it does get really hot in Arizona. We also keep our patio cushions inside just to keep them from being beaten on by the Arizona sun and this is where I keep everything stored that our maids would need. So we have two storage lockers. One of them holds all sorts of stuff from our bedding to our refills for our toiletries in the bathroom. And the other one is where I keep all of my paper products, so extra rolls of toilet paper, paper towels, all of the snacks for the welcome basket. Okay, all of that stuff is in this tub and they both have locks on them and the locks are the same code. So it's really easy for our cleaning lady and she can just go in, grab the stuff she needs, turn over the house and lock everything up and it just is able to live in there. The last tip I have for you is to do with your cleaning. And so this was the hardest part with me not living there was I had to find a cleaner who would be very thorough, do all of these random little steps that I needed her to do because I can't be there to do them in person. I found a cleaning lady and we've agreed on we use a jot form. So every time she goes into the house, she fills out this jot form and it is extraordinarily detailed and it makes her check off on every single thing from turning on the porch light and sweeping off the front porch to adding an extra roll of toilet paper. And she has to check yes for every single one. And then there's also a space for her to write if I need to restock anything at each one of the areas. This jot form has been super convenient and every time she goes, it's just sent to my email and then I can go through and I can be like, okay, so I need to send her a new order of toilet paper. So everything else is good and it even has an area where she can tell me if there's any damages and she just adds the photo straight to the job form and I can see what the damages are so that way I can bring them up to the guests. Making sure that you have very clear and concise communication with your cleaning lady is going to be crucial if you're running an Airbnb and you're not able to be there. Alright guys, I hope some of these tips were able to help you. I have loved being an Airbnb host. It is so much fun to me and I feel like I've learned so much so I hope that I'm able to pass some of this knowledge on to you. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please feel free to comment down below. I'm going to do one of those Amazon storefronts that includes a ton of the stuff that we bought for our house on Airbnb, so feel free to scroll through there. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please hit the big red subscribe button. I post videos on tips, tricks, and organization, and would love to be able to have you follow along to my content. Also, go ahead and follow me over on my Instagram, and shoot me a message. Let me know that you watched this video. I love interacting with you guys. It means the world to me, so thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, also, if you want to stay in my Airbnb, the link is down below. Okay, bye. Thank you.